Yo, we're back. It's Friday. It is June, June 2nd. I can't believe it. Can you believe we're into June, Carrie? No, just last week we were talking about summer picnics and barbecues. And I, I just, it's, it is hard to believe how fast this year goes. The, uh, all of them, all of them just go so fast. Yeah, so fast. But welcome everybody to another episode of Facebook Friday Live. Appreciate you all being here. Um, let me know just while we're kind of getting our, our groove on here. You know, today's going to be ask me anything. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. But let me know what you had for breakfast today. What was your plan strong breakfast of choice? I can tell you, I'll, I'll start. Carrie, and then I'd love for you to follow up. Sure. I have my patented, very, very typical Rips Big Bowl cereal with mango, banana, blueberries, frozen blueberries, and then a, I used a walnut milk this morning on top, Oh. along with some uh, some chia seeds and some hemp hearts. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That, and so you won't eat until like midnight tonight with all of that food. <laughs> Trust me, if, if we weren't like in the midst of this, I would be eating right now. Okay. Uh, I went a little lighter today because tomorrow, as I've been telling you all week long, I'm actually running a full marathon tomorrow on the coast of Oregon. So my, Ooh. yeah, plant strong, baby. But but my, my um regime really is sort of later in the week on, on marathon week, I try to cut back a little bit on some of the fiber foods because we know what fiber does. It's all good. I love it. But you also don't want a lot of that, you know, with you on race morning. So today I, I actually did have just a little bowl of steel cut oats. Um, I normally do like you, I normally put chia and flax in there, but I, I skipped that today. Um, I put a little bit of soy milk on there and a scoop of real uh, natural peanut butter. And instead of the PB2 pure, I went full on and half a banana. So I skipped the blueberries, which I normally put on there as well. So I would just, I went kind of simple today. All that right. was my breakfast. I like it. I like it. I like it. Well, mm -hmm. good luck in that marathon. Thanks. You have Thanks. A, do, you have a, do you have a goal that you're going for? You know, it's, uh, I think so feasibly, I don't know if this means anything to anyone out there, but I think feasibly I could do like three hours and 40 minutes to, to 345. Like that's, that's in my wheelhouse. That's what I've been training for, um, to qualify for Boston, which as most of us know, is like the granddaddy, you know, that's the Super Bowl of marathoning. I, at my age now, I just turned 50. I have to run a 355. So I think I can crush the 355 time. So my goal is a, is a little more aggressive than that, but I also don't want to bury myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicely. Nice. Well, way to put yourself out there, Carrie. Thanks. Way to show up, get out of your comfort zone and, and do these things. We, Thank you. We like that at Plant Strong a lot. Thank you. So we got, we got some questions that have rolled in. Uh, why don't we just start like uh, with this from Dana. Uh, I work afternoons and my day does start later. My question is, at what times during the day should I eat my meals? I love your program, have been doing it for several weeks, and I'm down 10 pounds. Well, congrats on being down 10 pounds. That's that's fantastic in a couple of weeks um, and, um, and kind of typical. So I, I don't quite know when you wake up and what time, but I would tell you, you know, typically I, I do, I don't, I don't skip meals. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't skip breakfast. I don't skip lunch. I don't eat two meals a day. I don't do intermittent fasting. I do breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And it's typically very much the same times. I will typically work out in the morning. Uh, I swim from seven to eight, come to the office. I typically uh, have breakfast at 8.30. I will then have lunch typically between 12.30 and one and dinner with the family sometime between six and seven o'clock. And that is like clockwork. It's very, very religious. And my system is used to it. My sleep patterns are used to it. Um, bathroom habits, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, my, I guess I'd say, depending upon when you wake up, I would then start 
some sort of a routine based upon that where an hour, an hour later or so have your breakfast, four to four to five hours later, have your lunch. And then four to five later uh, hours, six hours after that, have your dinner. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it sounds like what she's doing is working. If she's already lost 10 pounds and, uh, and I was, yes, it looks like a, a female picture there. Um, and, you know, my only other advice would be if you are working afternoons, that probably means that you're not getting off work until midnight, one in the morning. And I would maybe have a light snack after you get off work, but I wouldn't make that your heaviest meal because then ideally you're going to go to sleep after that. So I might think about making my biggest meal like right when I wake up just to break that fast, so to speak. And, and then maybe have a little lighter lunch right before you go into work, because you also don't want to feel sluggish and exhausted right when you go into work either. So maybe make that, that afternoon snack, kind of your lighter meal for the day. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what you get for breaks at dinner time, but that, I think that could be a regular meal, but I wouldn't eat too, too much after you get off work. Cause then that makes sleep hard. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah. Um, so Here's a question. I have osteoporosis and was recommended by Dr. McDougall to reduce or eliminate peas, beans, and lentils. I can't speak to that recommendation by Dr. McDougall. It doesn't seem to uh, jive or make sense with anything that I've heard from Dr. McDougall in the past. I would tell you that I think that what everybody can get behind is if you have uh, bone density loss going on, then you need to stress your bones. Just like we, we stress our muscles, right? We st stress our muscles to prevent sarcopenia, which is the wasting away of muscle mass that happens to everyone after the age of 30. You need to do the same thing with your bones. You need to stress them. And in particular, the best thing you can do is some sort of weight-bearing exercise. And if, you, if, the, if the sound of weight-bearing exercise like gives you a headache, then do something as simple as get a, a weighted vest from Amazon and then just wear it around the house. That, that will do a, a great number to build up those osteoblasts that are in our bones that will help build, the, the, um, the build and strengthen your, your bones. And the reason why we have osteoporosis for the most part, it's not because of a lack of calcium or vitamin D or sunshine or anything like that. The main culprit is we are so sedentary these days. We sit on average something like, you know, 15 hours a day. The latest research that I saw showed that most people are now moving, carry, catch this, seven and a half minutes a day, seven and a half minutes a day. So no wonder our, our bones are turning to styrofoam. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's so much about eliminate, eliminating beans, peas, or lentils. It's more about getting out, stress those bones, exercise, and ideally some sort of um, strength, um, weight-bearing exercise is what we're really after. Yeah. And I actually do have one of those weight vests. I bought it from a company called Hyperwear, uh, but you can buy them, you know, you can, you can buy them anywhere, but uh, Hyperwear is an Austin based company and mine is the 15 pound weight vest. And it's, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for somebody who's just starting. They do have like a 10 pound weight vest as well, which is good, but it really forces as I'm slouching over on my couch right now, it really forces you into a good posture position and it's great practice. It really is great practice because you realize, I, and this it's, it's kind of a frightening realization. You realize how much weight 10 or 15 pounds really feels on your body. Yeah. At when you throw it on top of your, yourself and uh, and it's it's inspiring to know, oh, if I can shed this, how much better will I feel? How much faster will I go? How much more vibrant will I will I feel and be? So, yeah, it's a it's a fun little trick. So this from Carolyn, um, do you think I will get enough protein? Um, you know, Carolyn, I don't know if um, if you're being sarcastic here. Or if this is a, a truly a real question, I'm going to treat it as a real question. I think it was re in reference to her question before about what McDougal said about oh, what well, Dr. Well, 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 yeah. I will tell you, as long as you're eating 
enough whole plant-based calories every day, you will, you will inherently be getting all the protein you need. And according to like the, um, Institute of Medicine, the, um, and, and other health organizations, we need roughly 10% of our calories coming from protein. And that is with a built-in safety margin of about 30%. And I can tell you, you just, you cannot blow it. Uh, even if you're not eating beans, peas, and lentils, you still can't blow it because your average fruit is right around six and a half, seven percent protein. Your average green leafy is 35% protein. Your average whole intact grain is right around 14% protein. Oats are sitting around 18% protein. Uh, quinoa, right around 19, 20. Your average, um, your average vegetable is 25% protein. So I'll just come back to as long as you're getting enough calories, you're going to be getting all the protein you need. And what you're going to be getting that most people aren't getting is fiber. And we now know that 97% of Americans are deficient in fiber. And the best way for you to get fiber is from whole plant-based foods. And when you eat this way, you're getting somewhere between 50 to probably 80 grams of fiber a day. You're not getting it out of the park. Yep. And uh, for those of you that listen to podcasts and enjoy podcasts, just yesterday, we released oh, yeah. the episode on plant-powered protein with Vasanto Molina and Corey Davis, who are two of the three authors of the most of the recent book, Plant Powered Protein. And, you know, I really like, Rip, how you challenged those authors. You challenged them on some of the, you know, some of the data in their book and and really wanted to understand why plant-based protein is superior to animal-based protein. Why are these myths so persistent that it's weaker or incomplete? And, you know, even some of their recommendations and her recommendations, you know, you, you had some, some questions about that. So it's a really informative episode. And so if you are into the podcasts, which I hope you are, because that keeps me employed, uh, <laughs> I highly recommend you follow the Plant Strong podcast. And I'm going to do a quick plug on how to do that, if I could, Rip. Go for it. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. So if you guys have, uh, for those of you that have, this is an Apple phone. This is, a, you know, an iPhone. But if you're not familiar, um, you know, every iPhone has this button, this purple button, and that's your native podcast button. It's on every iPhone. So when you click that, you can just do a search for Plant Strong. And we just recently changed the color to blue, which is yeah. really, which is really cool. But to follow it, you see up there, there's a check mark. If you hit that check mark, so right now it'll like I have it checked because I follow the show. It'll say follow or unfollow follow the show because then that means every Thursday when a new episode drops, it just lands right on your phone. You don't have to search it. You don't have to think about it. So that is my commercial for how to follow the Plant Strong podcast on Apple Podcasts. Very similar on Spotify for people that listen to Spotify. Thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm just going to say that, so we got people, a lot of people are commenting, ask Rip about avoiding those foods, right? Carolyn wants to know, I really need to look into this. I eat lentils almost every day. Eek. Let me tell you guys right now, beans, peas, and lentils are insanely, insanely uh, health promoting. They have, they have the Goldilocks amount of protein. They're not too high. And I want you to hear this because this is incredibly important you hear this. They are not too high in the sulfuric containing amino acids that actually drain calcium from your bones, unlike meat and dairy, red meat, chicken, fish, dairy products that are elevated in those sulfuric containing amino acids and will actually draw siphon calcium from your bones. So I, the most important thing you can do is exercise, weight bearing exercise, avoid too much salt, too much sugar, do not smoke cigarettes. Those are the main culprits. Avoiding peas, peas, and lentils is something that I want to get out of your head right now. And I will personally check in with John McDougall and understand if he did, in fact, say this, why? And there must be some sort of a idiosyncratic thing around this. 
Um, yeah. So please, people, get this out of your out of your brain. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, I'm, I'm scrolling through a lot of the breakfast that people have lots of overnight oats, lots of cereals. This is great. Love it. Yeah. Somebody yeah. asked about Brazil nuts for lowering LDL. Here we go. Dr. Dr. Greger recommends that. Well, well, yeah. So uh, I think that he recommends one Brazil nut a day because of the selenium that's in the Brazil nut. And so I think that that sounds perfectly fine. Um, and I think you're right. I think that the research that he has after it was put to the test uh, does show that it can help to lower uh, LDL. And, uh, and my, my very you know, non-medical thought on this too is just realizing that one, one food, you know, one nut is probably not the panacea. You know, like it's, I feel like having one Brazil nut a week in conjunction with a lot of the other cholesterol lowering foods that we consume are going to, to help. So um, that would be, just be my thought process about it. And this is coming from somebody who, you know, went plant strong because I had high LDLs. Well, Carrie, you make a very, very good point here. Let's keep in mind that like eating whatever you want and having a, having a Brazil nut, right? Once a day or a couple times a month is not going to be the cure. The, the, the true, um, the true panacea here is going to be what is the totality of how you're eating day in and day out. That is the most important thing. And that's when you get the results that we're all looking for. Um, I'm looking for, so here's a question. Uh, what's this one? Uh, are plants run products available in Canada? If so, where? So Paul, I'll let you know that they are available. We do ship to Canada as part of our direct to consumer e-commerce um, business, but I'll let you know that the shipping costs into Canada are exorbitant. And I apologize about that, but that's just kind of where it is right now. Here in the United States, we have a flat rate shipping cost of $4.99. We, we just decided that that was really important for us to do here in the lower, I should, the lower 48, um, because before that it was like $17 and 99 cents. And that just was, that was intolerable on a lot of different levels. So we decided to eat a fair amount of our profit to lower that those shipping costs. But in Canada, it's, we ship there, but you're just gonna have to pay more than anyone wants. And I apologize about that. Right, Carrie? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. And I was thrilled myself to see the, at least here in the United States, the, the flat shipping rate. It, it is a game changer. It really is. Mm -hmm. And it's still, I, I would also, Paul, I would also venture to say that what you pay in shipping um, for plant strong foods is still a lot lower than what you would pay at fast food restaurants or any kind of restaurant. Um, and, you know, if you consume alcohol, like that's the stuff that's so expensive when you eat out is the alcohol, the junk, all of that stuff. So I'd much rather pay that in shipping. This is a question from Candleflower42. What a fun name. Um, Rip, would you consider a discussion debate with Peter Atia? I respect you both so much, but he eats meat and being near 70 and not able to exercise much. He's got me concerned about sarcopenia. Well, we've already talked about sarcopenia and the, you know, the best way to do that is you do, you gotta, you gotta exercise, you gotta, uh, you, you gotta impact, you know, right? You're put some sort of impact and strain on your muscles. It's funny because I've had at least five people mention Peter's name, uh, here in town in the last just week. I hear he moved to Austin recently. So I think a great thing would to be, would be just to have him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Invite him mm -hmm. as a guest to be on the podcast. And um, I hear he's got a great book that he recently came out with. So, and it's you. interesting because Peter Atia, for and, and I like he even his mindset has shifted in the last several years because there was a time uh, that you know he was Mr. Keto guy and he's not so much anymore. Uh, I, I do know he does, he's not plant, plant based exclusively, but. 
he um, he's really sort of changed his tune on a lot of things uh, for the better, in our opinion, about yeah. quality of life and longevity. And that's the name of his new book. It's called Outlive. Yeah. Uh, this is from Bourbon Sour. What well, another great name, right? <laughs> uh, hey, Rip, I've been playing strong for 18 months because of you. I'm down 80 pounds yes. in a reverse type two diet, type two diabetes and feel awesome. What are your tips to lose the last 15 to 20 pounds? I walk every day and work out six times per week. Thanks, Rick. So, Rick, this is very, very common when we, um, you know, we'll get down 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds, and then we kind of plateau. And what you have to do is you have to evaluate basically your plate and what percentage of your plate is coming from the more calorie dense whole plant-based foods and how much are coming from the veggies, the greens, and you need to, and the starchy veggies, and you need, you need to make a bit of a shift. So instead of, let's say it being 50% of the, let's just say rice, beans, breads, pastas, you want that to be maybe 35%, 30% and have the other 70% be the vegetables, the fruits, um, the less calorie dense um, plant-based foods. I highly recommend that you read chapter five of the Engine 2 Seven Day Rescue Diet twice because I go great detail into calorie density. And if you hit plateaus, what you got to do to like break right on through it. But know that you're like, can't even... Carrie and I can't even explain how proud we are of what you've done here in the last 18 months down 80 pounds. It's huge. Yeah. I think another addition that I would add to that is something that we've already talked about today. And that might be, if you're not already, add some resistance training. Um, it will help you lose body fat. Now you will gain muscle. So if your primary concern is a number on a scale, uh, I would encourage you to shift that focus from what that number says to the composition of your body. And so you can lean out um, by doing some resistance training and some weight lifting and some um, high intensity interval training as well. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, Addie, my husband is so sick of me wanting him to eat healthier or at the very least less meat and more plants. How can I inspire him or should I stop trying? I'm desperate as his health is bad and he's 44 years old. Well, Addy, you know, welcome to the club. I think we all have people in our lives that we would love to get to eat healthier and to embrace this lifestyle because we know what it could do for them and their declining health. I've seen it with people that are very close to me. And you think with kind of the background and the pedigree that I have with, you know, my father and, you know, the books that I've written and what I've been able to do for literally thousands and thousands of thousands of people. But you you know the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And, you know, Carrie's got the same story with some of her family members. I would tell you the best thing that you can do, Addy, is just be the best example that you can. Stay true to yourself, find your North Star and do it. And you're, you're either your husband will come around or he won't. And I just think at some point, you know, he is just going to keep resisting you as long as you keep trying. So I would take more of a backseat approach, take a front seat approach to your own like diligence with eating whole food plant based. But don't nag. Don't belittle. Don't you know, don't do any of those things. That's not going to get you where you want to be. Mm -mm. And that is the exact story, Addie, of my husband and I. Uh, uh, I went full kale first uh, in 2009. And I, for me, like there was no turning back. And But I never, ever, ever pressured my husband to, to do any of it. I mean, with there, he fortunately, he was a decent eater. His mom taught him well, but he was certainly a seafood eater, a meat eater. Um, and he just gradually by default just started to eat what I was eating. And he has been exclusively whole food plant-based now for about six or seven years. And it literally was just me 
living my life and and living the path that was working for me. And I think that just that just showed. Yeah. Perfect, Carrie. Way to go. Um, you know, this is just a comment from a, a, Alicia. For what it's worth, I'm 61 years old, whole food plant based since 2003 and no issues with muscle or strength loss. Um, you know, way to go, uh, Alicia. Um, yeah. And then, you know, this keep keep being a good example. That's all you can do. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, this question from Megan Rip, where do you get your T-shirts? The kale one, the one you have on now, I want to get some for my dad who has been following your dad's diet for a month and is down 15 pounds. Uh, the kale ones, I think we're going to put those up and have you, ha so you have the ability to actually purchase those uh, online here very, very soon. We 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 stopped selling them for, for a while there, but I think we're going to reintroduce that. This one here is, this is from uh, the uh, Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group pbnsg.org. You can go there. And I think in order this shirt, but I collect them over the years. I just keep collecting these cool whole mm -hmm. food plant based t-shirts that, uh, that mean a lot to me. So you can do the same whenever yeah. you, you like, you know, you know, snag it. And I know that there's going to be some new shirts coming out too. That in addition to the kale ones that say, uh, eat strong food, um, which, which is one of our taglines as well. So, be on the lookout for that here, probably by the end of the summer. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Sarah, as a plant-based athlete, I'm often told I need to eat more protein to get better gains and become stronger. However, I naturally do not eat a lot. Any suggestions on how to eat more? Smaller plant-based meals tend to fill me up and I do not feel like I can add any more food. Well, Sarah, I, you know, it would be very helpful if I could see you, I could know your weight know what is what it is you're training for. Uh, typically what I find is that when you're training and you know you're you're revving up the engine, you typically will be eating an extra 500 to a thousand calories a day. Like for my, myself, I usually train two hours a day between swimming and pickleball and I probably eat 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day. And um, just by eating more, obviously, you're going to get more protein uh, because of the protein that's just inherent in that extra piece of bread, the pasta, the beans, whatever it is, the fruit. Um, but if you're not feeling bad, right, uh, I wouldn't let what other people tell you um, influence your need to get more protein. I, I can guarantee you, you probably don't have a protein deficiency. You're probably not protein deficient. Uh, I don't know if, if you look too skinny and that's why people are saying that if they want you to look stronger. But again, we'd have to meet and and I'd have to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and Sarah, I I feel you on that one um, because I I'm a plant-based athlete, obviously, but like I am, I'm very petite. I'm five foot tall on a, on like a high heel day. <laughs> and so I also don't eat, I, I don't put protein down my guzzle just because I'm supposed to hit a target number. If that makes sense, you're going to see a lot of, there's a lot of online calculators that tell you that you need to have a ton of protein to support muscle repair and recovery. And you do need protein to support muscle repair and recovery. But I think where I would caution you is just after a hard training session, whatever that is for you, um, I would just be mindful about getting a little serving of protein in afterwards, along with some carbohydrates. So beans and rice, hummus and spinach. Um, you know, these are things that we eat anyways. So you don't have to go buy a gigantic block of tofu just to shove it down your pie hole to, to hit some arbitrary number. Really continue to go by how you feel. Now, you know, that could change as you age and your needs may change as you age. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I just think you are thinking very intuitively and I urge you to continue to think that way instead of being falling into a particular dogma or formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, Stan the man, can you get enough iron eating plant-based 
And I would say that absolutely you can. I have been eating this way for 35 years and um, I've never been iron deficient. I never supplemented with any iron. And, you know, it's just, there's iron in, in, in just about every whole plant-based food that's out there. Some of the rock stars are greens and beans. Uh, if it's an issue, I would also say if you want to bump up the absorption of your iron, make sure you're doing citrus, uh, at some point during the day is close to those meals as well. Whether it's bell peppers, oranges, grapefruits, the, that has been shown to help. I understand that women, especially, you know, uh, athletic women, when you're menstruating, uh, can have issues with, uh, with low iron levels. And in those cases, there might be a need for some sort of supplementation of iron, no, no doubt about it. But otherwise, um, if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and you're getting enough calories, uh, and you're not a female that's training, that's menstruating, you shouldn't have a problem. Anything you want to add to that, Carrie? Are you good? No, I, I, I'm down with that. Um, yeah. And I am a menstruating female and I have not had low iron and I do get my blood work done every year uh, at the doctor. So, um, so I feel very good about that. Yeah. And I think it's important too, for people to know, you know, there's, there's two different kinds of iron. You got a heme iron that comes from animals that basically, or it comes from, um, uh, yeah, it comes from muscle. It comes from animals that have bled. Uh, and then you have non-heme iron that comes from plants. And, uh, and the cool thing about the plant-based iron is it's actually this really intelligent iron that if your body has too much iron in it, non-heme iron, it actually can dump it. it. It has this natural mechanism where it can actually dump. However, with when you're getting predominantly heme iron from animals, your body can actually build it up and it can't release it. And that's why there's certain people that have hemochromatosis where you actually have to go in every couple months and actually have your blood drawn uh, because your iron levels get too high. So again, it's just, it's one of these things that to me, it's why everything about whole food plant-based nutrition is so superior to an, the animal-based version, whether it's iron, whether it's protein, uh, whether it's all the things that plant-based products don't have, like the saturated fat, like the dietary cholesterol, the heter heterocyclic amines, um, you know, the TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, that you're going to get in all these animal products that actually uh, promote plaque buildup in our arteries. The list is wide and very robust. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, Brian, I've got high triglycerides. What would be a good regimen to reduce that number? Well, typically one of the things that really elevates those triglycerides, and for those that are wondering, triglycerides are an, an indication of the amount of fat that's in your blood. And the biggest culprit is too many refined sweets. And the, at the top of that list is alcohol. So if you're having just one glass of wine or a beer and you go in to get your blood drawn, and you have the, you know, a lipid panel, those triglycerides could be as high as two, 300, 400. I actually had a gentleman who was drinking most of his calories, doing smoothies all day long, green juices, and his triglycerides were 2,000. Oh my God. 2,000. And within one week of basically masticating all of his food, instead of drinking it, it went down to 168 one week, 2000 to 168. So alcohol, uh, you know, any refined sugar, jams, white rice, white pasta, um, for certain individuals, uh, all fruit juices, right? All fruit juices. And then for certain individuals, sometimes if they have too much fruit during the day, but that's pretty, pretty rare. Yep. 
Uh, wondering what your favorite plant milk is. Mm -hmm. I like that milk, but it has so much sugar. <laughs> well, Shirley, it looks like, fingers crossed, we will be introducing a plant strong milk into the market here, hopefully in uh, February of 2024. We're going to be the cleanest milk on the shelf. And uh, it's just going to have basically oat, water, and a little bit of salt and some very, very important fortifications with the B12 and, and the D. So my fingers are crossed that those will be hitting the shelves in February. I can't say much more than that. But in the meantime, uh, I'm really a fan of Elmhurst. They're super clean. They're pricey at about $6.99 for a quart. But they are the cleanest on the shelf for sure. I cannot um, wait for that. I cannot I, wait. I can't either. Uh, big time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to help me here with the next question? Yeah, I'll pull this one up. It's a it's it's a it's a long one. Um, you want to read it? Yeah. Uh, from Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. I have the approach of eating as highly nutritious as possible and eat whole food plant based. However, since eating this way heals arteries, wouldn't it stand to reason that if I did eat something that had a small amount of something I typically avoid like oil, that my arteries would be healed anyways because of how I eat every day? Well, that's a great, great question, Jeff. And I will tell you this, and I know this just from my father's um, research and from his experience with what we we called the walking dead. So if you remember, he took these patients that for the most part had end stage heart disease and they were given most of them less than one year to live. They were turned down for any more stents, bypasses, angioplasty, you name it, done. And, uh, you know, he's, he's counseled and seen patients that have had up to 47 different stents, 47. And what he discovered is because, you know, he's been doing this since 1984 and he experimented with them introducing a little bit of so-called like healthy, heart healthy olive oil into their diets once a day for dinner. And with these patients, within one and a half to two weeks, just like having a tablespoon or two of olive oil with their stir fry on their salad, allowed their angina to return. So it's amazing how if you've got heart disease, there's these little spot fires that will exist in you for a long, long time. So I don't, I don't know, Jeff, what your health status is and where you are, but that to me tells me that even a little bit has the potential to injure the very, very delicate innermost lining of our vessels, the endothelium, and hijack the production of nitric oxide that is responsible for the dilation of these vessels the 65,000 miles of these vessels that run through our bodies. So I had no idea we had 65,000 miles of vessels in our body. 65,000 miles of vessels. Now, no. uh, you know this, Carrie, I got a hard stop in yep. about two minutes. So maybe we can take one more question, but okay. I've, I've enjoyed this so much with you, Carrie, and all these great questions. I think we should maybe do these maybe once every two months. Yeah. Oh, without question. Yeah, we did. We did a sort of ask me anything back in April and uh, we could go for for hours for sure. I'm I'm just oh. sort of scrolling through uh, some of these questions. Um, well, you know, let me just do this one because Lou's okay. like, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about GMOs. Um, I will tell you this. I think the most important thing that you do is are you eating whole food plant-based and uh, you know, we could arm wrestle all day long about, uh, you know, GMOs, organic, conventional. And I'll tell you that I eat conventional all the time. And you look at the research that's been done by uh, Dr. Greger. And for the most part, when you're eating this way, it has very, very little impact on your, um, your propensity to come down with some sort of a disease or something because you're 
consuming a little bit of pesticides here and there. The GMOs, you know, Carrie, uh, it's funny. I, you know, I've heard that almost everything we have is in some way, shape or form uh, 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 has been a gen genetically modified organism, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I think this is one of those things where you do your due diligence if it's really important to you to avoid GMOs, which I completely understand and respect, then you definitely want to buy organic for sure. All, all soy, all corn and anything else that makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same thing with organic. If organic's important to you, then buy organic, especially, you know, if that's like high on your, your totem pole. But to me, the highest thing on my top totem pole is, am I eating whole food plant-based? And that to me is like the top of, of my, my mm -hmm. wish list. And everybody's is a little bit different. Yep. So, um, but I'm not going to chastise somebody if they're eating a GMO tomato uh, or a potato or, or, or something like that. Yep. And I wouldn't let that be the stopper of you approaching this lifestyle. It, you know, I think people are looking for the reasons not to do it sometimes. Uh, I wouldn't let that be the stopper. And then I would also look at the uh, the dirty dozen and the clean 15. Um, if this is a, a big concern for you, the dirty dozen are the fruits and vegetables, the 12 fruits and vegetables that that they do recommend, um, like Gregor and experts recommend. If yeah. you're going to buy organic, buy these 12 uh, organic. At the clean 15, you can get away with conventional. So I would just look at those lists and see where your where your tastes lie, but don't let this topic of conversation be the stopper for you to explore whole food plant-based lifestyle. You know, we've been talking about iron in this question, you know, eating high amounts of iron from meat, I heard causes health issues, but this applied to non-heme iron. So it's a, this is a great added reason for you to get your iron from plants instead of instead of animals because the heme iron from animals is very oxidative in nature so it causes oxidative stress which does contribute um, to the aging process uh, uh, atherosclerosis all these things all right uh you know <laughs> Mary, i i would love to go on Gosh, this is, ah, look at I all I know, there's questions. so many good questions. Wow. And we may have to turn, uh, we actually may just have to do an Ask Me Anything podcast where I collect some of these questions that we just weren't able to get to today and have you riff on them on, a, on an upcoming podcast as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys, what a great community. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for everyone that's pitched in in the comment section and is helping all of your other, you know, plant-based family members here, uh, figure it out as we're all learning and growing together. This is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful weekend and rip 